Welcome, one and all, to Weekly Wordplay with me, your host, Stephanie. And a special l'chaim this week to any Jewish listeners out there celebrating Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. In your honor, I'll be featuring eight words, maybe a few extra from Yiddish, that have deeply embedded themselves in the English language, used liberally by goys and menches alike. One catch... Please don't fetch about my pronunciation. It may not be a 100% authentic Jew, but introducing the mainstream Americanized versions of these words is kind of the point. To start with, what is Yiddish? A language spoken by Jewish peoples all over the world, originating in the Rhineland about 1,000 years ago. To be technical, it's a hodgepodge of Hebrew, Aramaic, various Slavic and Romance languages, and, most of all, German. Compare that to Hebrew, on the right, a Semitic language like Arabic, and you'll see there's a big difference. Hebrew itself has a fascinating history, being the only dying language to have ever been completely resurrected from the brink of extinction. Its success was in large part due to the international effort to create a permanent Jewish homeland, Israel, after World War II. Just 73 years later, there are already more than 5 million speakers who consider Hebrew to be their first language. Before that, however, Yiddish was widely considered to be the mother tongue, and so it spread wherever its people went, including the United States. Today, there are about one and a half million native Yiddish speakers, but the language still holds a special place in the hearts of the Jewish community. And because of the large number of Jews in highly visible positions, particularly show business, from Broadway to Hollywood, some of its more colorful vocabulary has become very prominent over the years, crossing over into everyday English slang. These include even the most banal of exclamations, like saying Gesundheit when someone sneezes, Oy vey, when you're rolling your eyes, and Meh when you couldn't care less. Another word that may come from Yiddish, although there remains some debate on the subject, is the glitch in computer glitch. Also a verb, my computer won't stop glitching. Yiddish truly is everywhere. Two important points to keep in mind, though, is that First of all, despite sounding a lot like German, Yiddish is written, as you've already seen, using a Semitic alphabet, including letters that we don't have in English. As such, there are many, many spelling variations. Equally important, most of the words we're about to learn are still considered slang, so don't use them in an interview, and don't expect dictionaries to make it easy for you to look them up either. Ready to have some fun? Let's begin with putz, arguably the most versatile of the lot. Say that with me, putz. This word comes from Yiddish, directly from German, where it meant finery or adornment, like a Christmas ornament or a fancy new accessory. Delightfully, however, in modern times, it has developed the new definition of simple, despicable, or just plain idiotic. I guess it doesn't show a lot of respect for men and women who get dressed up fancy all the time. They may have a lot of money in their wallets, but there sure isn't a lot in their heads. In fact, there's probably bubkis. Bubkis. Absolutely nothing. This is a great, strong, emphatic word found in good company with a few synonyms in our sample sentence. I did all that work for what? Bubkis. Zilch. Nada. Zilch, for the record, is a Slavic-based Americanism, and nada is Spanish both for nothing and he swims, because why not? Bupkis, on the other hand, probably came from a word meaning goat droppings. And in case you're not sure what I mean by droppings, goat poop. They're all fun alternatives to the number zero. But we're not done with putts, though, so let's back up for a minute. A putz can be an idiot, but be careful because Jews can also use this vulgarly to mean penis. 
even worse, a dirty penis. Most commonly though, in my experience at least, puss likes to be used as a phrasal verb accompanied by around. When you putz around, you move very slowly, very inefficiently, wasting everyone's time. Children like to putz around a lot. Stop being such a putz, always putzing around looking for your stuff. Children also tend to be klutzes, klutz, which can also mean stupid, but is more commonly used to specify clumsiness, as in you break things a lot accidentally. I can't believe you dropped that plate, you big klutz. Our next word has much more in common with putz than you might think. It also refers to a fool or oaf. Remember that one? And there's even another German word spelled exactly the same that means adornment. Yiddish smuck, however, actually comes from Polish for dragon, which the Jews adapt to describe, once again, their penises. The English version, at least, doesn't carry that vulgarity. It's most often used to describe someone who's easy to take advantage of. What a schmuck. I can't believe that he fell for that old con. Schmucks or schmoes are particularly susceptible to schmoozers. Originally referring to the same friendly idle chat as gabbing, to schmooze in English at least has a definitively negative connotation. Those blessed with the honey-tongued gift of gab are able to schmooze the pants off of anyone, talking until they get what they want, like the salesman in this next sentence is ordered to do. We need their business, so go over there and start schmoozing. Spiel is a German term for what you might say in a situation like that. Your shtick, shtick, is a special trait or talent you may employ to get the other person's attention. It too is usually a bit on the negative side, expressing lack of sincerity or authenticity, but it's been used in show business for years to highlight the amazing skills, especially of comedians and their characteristic gimmick, to use another synonym. For example, one of Charlie Chaplin's classic shticks was dancing potatoes, whereas a modern company shtick may be selling custom doggy beds online. Again, leading a bit to the negative side, you may think of that and say to yourself, it's a good shtick to bring customers in, but how will you keep them? Moving on, our next word is schlep which is what the chosen people essentially had to do for thousands of years, constantly being forced to move from one land to another. In their language, they actually use this term to describe dragging objects, like a heavy suitcase or bags. But in English, we're more likely to schlep ourselves and complain about it most of the way. It's a great verb to use when you're exhausted, yet have no choice but to keep going, like this poor schmuck. She made me schlep around the mall all day, carrying her shopping. And if he fell behind, she probably yelled, move your ass, to get him to hurry up. The Yiddish have a few words for butt as well that we've adopted over the years, including tush, tushy, and tukus. So she could have also said, you'd better get your tushy over here if you know what's good for you. That threat works just as well on boyfriends as it does on children who keep putzing around. All three of these terms are, in all seriousness, kind of cute alternatives to using the B word in front of kids. And since you asked, what's another fun Yiddish word for a part of the body? Why not give schnoz a sniff? It's the Yiddish word for nose, especially a big one. At last, we end with our idiom of the week, by the skin of your teeth. Why? Because not only have we been learning way too much about our bodies this week, but also because this phrase comes from the Old Testament book of Job, also found in the Jewish Torah. My bones cleaved to my skin and to my flesh, and I escaped by the skin of my teeth. 
For those of you who've never heard the story, it was not a fun time for Job, nor for the people in our sample sentence. Obviously, your teeth don't actually have any skin on them, so by the skin of your teeth, we mean just barely. That was too close. We made it, but just by the skin of our teeth. Mazel tov. You'll be a rabbi in no time at this rate. And that's before you've even had a chance to practice these mushuga words. Now putzing around, let's get right to it. Describe a time you fell for someone's schmoozing shtick, like a schmuck. Come on, let's be honest, we've all done something dumb at one point or another. I just hope that you were able to schlep your way out of that problem without too much damage being done, even if it was by the skin of your teeth. I also hope that you didn't learn bub kiss from the experience. As the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. But fool me twice, shame on me. Time for me to get my tukas out of here. Stay safe out there and happy holidays, no matter what you're celebrating. Thank you, as always, for watching.